The best part about being alive today here in 2021 is that you can learn anything you want on the internet. If you look at YouTube, there's really no shortage of resources out there for learning anything that you want. If you wanna learn how to throw an ax, if you wanna learn how to crochet or knit, if you wanna learn how to be a programmer, there are so many people out there who've put free content that there's basically no excuse that you can't figure out how to do this. Back in my day when I was a kid, right? Like when I was in high school, you had to go to the library, you had to check out books. And if you wanted to talk to an expert on the subject, you had to reach out to them, you had to call them, which was really hard. Whereas now there are YouTubers who are giving away everything that they know here on this platform. But what you may have seen as well is there is a certain saturation now with being a self-taught programmer. So that means that, yeah, you can be a self-taught programmer. I could be a self-taught programmer, but so can everybody else, right? Like everybody in your office, uh, everyone in your family, anyone can technically really learn this. They all have the access or the resources to do this now. So it can kind of worry you if you're really pursuing this, that maybe this isn't gonna work out, right? Maybe there's just gonna be too many people, there's gonna be not enough jobs, and that's not even worth it to spend the time. So in this video, what I wanted to break down is exactly what state we're in right now as self-taught programmers and whether it's still something that you should pursue. Now, one thing I wanna point out here is that the landscape of being a self-taught programmer has dramatically changed in the last five to 10 years. Five years ago, it was really six years ago when I learned this, there was really not a movement of being a self-taught programmer. Sure, there were YouTube channels out there, there was even people talking about it, but I hadn't really heard of it. The only person, the only way that I actually got into this was through a person that I knew who basically recommended it, I trusted him, and I just followed everything that he told me to do, and I eventually landed a job. Now, there is a proliferation of not only YouTubers, of course, which is fantastic. I love the fact that my channel is possible, that other people are putting out tons of free content as well, but also there's a proliferation of non-traditional resources that you can access, right? So instead of going to a four university, which those obviously still exist, uh, but you can go to a boot camp, right? You can go to boot camp, you can get some sort of certificate, you can do junior college classes, you can do like a mentorship program like I have. There's so many different ways that you can do this now. Now, if you have been doing this for some time, you may have noticed that there are other things that are potentially worrying. Like if you go to social media, for example, if you go to my free Facebook group, which there's 50,000 people in, so it's, it can be a pretty accurate litmus test of what's going on, there will be people who post in there from time to time who have mentioned they've been doing this for a year or maybe they've been doing this for two years, right? And they haven't actually gotten any job offers. Maybe they've gotten interviews, they've learned to code for a while, they've got all the right courses, about all the right books, they maybe just didn't really have the stuff, right? We don't really know, but there are people who are reporting this. So if you're doing this, it can be very concerning because you don't want to spend six months a year tucked away just studying all the time putting in the work to realize that in the end there was just too much competition so that leads to the question is it even worth it anymore now before i explain what i think the state of being a self-taught programmer is here in 2021 and really give you some concrete examples of why i think it's the case make sure to go down below and hit the subscribe button so as far as evaluating whether it's possible or feasible to be a self-taught programmer there's a couple interesting data points that i've come across the first one really has to do with surveys that are sent out to HR, to recruiters who actually end up hiring a lot of people in technical positions as software developers. And one of the things that has stood out to me over time is that people are more open than they have ever been to hiring people who don't have a traditional education background, right? So in other words, if you went back like 10 or 15 years, like hiring somebody without a CS degree for many companies was just a weird thing. It was like, should we really be doing that? Whereas now companies are seeing the value of hiring people without a true credential, right? So if you've been to boot camp, they're okay with that. If you taught yourself on your own, they're open to that. What companies typically want to see now, which should be very encouraging for you, is that if you can do the work, they're more concerned about that. They're not necessarily concerned that you have the right degrees. And I'll actually throw up some links there to the studies or the, I really should say surveys that mention these data points. Now from there, one of the other interesting data points for myself that's more anecdotal is just running my mentorship program. So I work with a lot of people who are trying to make the transition, they're regular people who work, you know, what I call regular jobs, you know, nothing that's necessarily in the software development field. And it's been really encouraging to see over the years that there has been a pretty constant interest in people with no really educational background, like no traditional educational background. So when people job hunt in my program, I see that they're getting interest from companies, they're getting interviews, and obviously they're getting hired. 
So I'm seeing that constant stream there as well. Now, one of the things that I've noticed being in the field as a programmer and also working with people who get hired is that the really the job hiring system is pretty broken. Companies are really struggling to hire talent. So it's not uncommon for companies to hire people and then eventually fire them because they're not a good fit, because they weren't really able to evaluate their skills. And this should actually be pretty encouraging for you because it means that there still aren't really great systems that have been refined to figure out who is really qualified for the positions that are getting hired in. So if you come in, you can show that you have the chops by maybe your portfolio projects, by being able to pass some technical interviews, you can get hired in those positions. Now, I'd absolutely say you wanna be the best developer you can be so that you don't get fired, so they end up being very happy with you. But that should be an advantage for a lot of you guys out there who are willing to put in the work and really make yourself good programmers. Okay, so up to this point, it probably feels pretty encouraging, right? Like, yeah, I'm gonna be a self-taught programmer. Huh? Andy told me so, right? Well, I'm gonna give a real fat reality check here. So the fat reality check is that just statistically, if you look at how many people end up buying Udemy course and watching some of these YouTube videos here that just by a pure numbers game, not everybody can be a software developer. So what that means for you is that you're ultimately competing with other people out there who are doing this. Now, competition for a lot of people, they say, oh my God, I'm competing with other people, it's so scary. The good news for you is that most people that I've found just aren't very self-disciplined. They aren't very organized, right? Just the average person in our population. So the average person who chooses to buy a Udemy course and watch a video like this, they just don't have the wherewithal to follow through on something like this. So the more that you can be that type of person who can set a goal, you know, follow through, uh, commit to doing something, be disciplined enough to just be consistent over a long period of time, the more that your chances grow that you can do this. And the bar for what I'm talking about here, it's not super high. It's not like you have to be, you know, Jocko Willink waking up at five in the morning and doing this every day. It's definitely very difficult. There are no shortcuts. You're gonna have to possibly go through maybe hundreds of applications, like send them out, maybe you have to go through dozens of interviews and eventually you'll land one. I work with plenty of people who have that experience, but you have to stay persistent. You have to be willing to adapt and change things and be flexible and constantly be learning. But if you can do that, if you can be persistent, if you can stick with it for the long run, you know, months and maybe even years, then the likelihood that you're gonna do this definitely increases. But as I always say, it's not a quick fix. There are no shortcuts in this. Now, I hope I haven't demoralized you at this point, but I'm trying to bring a balanced viewpoint of what it's gonna to take to become a self-taught programmer of 2021 and what those chances are. By the way, if you haven't joined my free Facebook group yet, I would recommend doing that. I will leave a link in the description below here of how you can do that. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.